years ago. There were more people here 10 years ago. It's very nice to see everyone. Everybody is happy to be here. And I think uh, it's, it's a very good sign that people are coming back to the biohackathons every year. Um, so I'm going to go straight away from my title, I think. I'm also the anti-mark in terms of slides. <laughs> I like one word slides. 10 years ago, we started. And uh, at the time, I actually started in biology myself. And I must, uh, this, this talk is really going to be about the biohackathons and, and what we should do next. 10 years ago. So what is so great about the biohackathons? You know, it appeals to us and we are hackers, right? Do you like to go to other types of conferences? <laughs> this really is my favorite conference. Um, and the reason is that we actually don't do talks. <laughs> and that's how we started out. You know, we started out with a few talks, and now we've turned into two days of talks, which, you know, is detrimental. But uh, I <laughs> we still have five days of hacking ahead, right? So what is it about us that, that makes it so enjoyable? And I think uh, the key thing is what I tell my students is that, you know, we are on, on the autistic side of the spectrum. You know, maybe, you know, it's 50%, it's but actually, you know, it's going to be, it's more like 60, 70, 80, some are 100%. And autism is maybe related to genius, I don't know. Um, but I tell my students it's not normal, you know, that you sit 10 hours a day behind a screen. It's not normal. To us it's normal, it looks normal, You're, it, all of us are behind screens now. But most bi biologists I deal with uh, don't like to uh, sit behind screens. So it's about connections. What, what the Biarchton really has given me is that uh, I got to know a lot of people who are like me. And we spend time hacking, right? Which means, means is actually we spend time experimenting. Right? We, can, we can do this outside our regular jobs. I think that's, that's the key asset. You know, that's uh, one of the great things about, about biohackathons. And it leads to new stuff. Yeah, FAIR was created here. Anyone read the FAIR paper? Hands, please. You wrote it, Mark, that doesn't count. <laughs> so there's a minority. You know, there's only five people, well, six people here who read the FAIR paper. And what did you think of it? <laughs> but, you know, you're getting a thumbs up. But, you know, what is the reason you give a thumbs up? It's not that, you know, that it's a great paper. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a paper who appeals to <laughs> this, this is the paper that addresses you know a communication to people who are not like us is that correct mark sure. right <laughs> so i think one, one thing we need to do at this by acton is to discuss results, right? And then and, and, uh, uh, Michelle just uh, gave a great introdu introduction to that. You know, we need to celebrate our successes and Mark also, you know, and we need to make a list of them really. Yeah, I think the, the papers that were written so far do not really cover what we have achieved. If you, if you, if you speak to every individual involved, um, they will tell you your successes for themselves. And then maybe I'll, I'll, I'll get to mentioning a few of those here. Uh, one of them is CodeFests. CodeFests originated next to biacatons because, you know, the biacatons had too many talks. <laughs> so we needed a CodeFest where talks are actually not allowed. The first CodeFest we organized together with Toshiaki also, and Raul is here, and Francesco is not here, in Italy. Uh, and it was great, you know, and now CodeFests have become a uh, standard uh, addition to the Bioinformatics Open Source Conference, for example, that was also held this year. So some of the achievement, well, what about the Biohackathon? What about the, the, the last 10 years, right? We started with web services. Anyone remember SOAP? <laughs> Another thumbs up from Jurvan. <laughs> <laughs> Biomobi. <laughs> oh, Mark knows, yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah, so 10 years ago, remember Mark? I, I, I mentioned Biomobi in my talk, and I said, what is it? Actually, 
Yes. <laughs> what is Biomobi, right? And um, I still don't know the answer. It, it appears to be to be everything. And, and I'm getting, you know, FAIR is also quickly becoming something that is including everything. So then we moved on to REST. Yeah, because SOAP didn't deliver, really. Um, and then in another biacton, we, we, we made a jump to RDF. Remember that? Remember that talk by Francois? He blew me away, actually, you know? He showed three circles on the board. And he says, this is a triple. <laughs> Remember that? <clears throat> oh my god, blew me away. So we got into graphs and sparkle, and, and Jervin uh, is a champion of sparkle and graphs. And he got a prize for that, I think it's excellent. And then we move on to FAIR, right? So what is next? We cannot predict the future, but um, it's going to be JSON LD, paywalls. So really, the Bioctone is a community of visionaries and hackers that get together. That's what I truly think. Um, and we are giving direction to bioinformatics. We are bioinformatics. You know, we are the people who execute. There's many people who call themselves bioinformaticians. I know even people who, uh, who use a browser call themselves bioinformaticians, which is, which is okay. Yeah, but they don't give direction. You know, we are driving it. So what about the future? Do we know? I think we need more bioactants, not less. What about FAIR? This is my favorite slide. <laughs> it's not dry. <laughs> yes, fair. Well, I think we need fair for real, right? That's it. Was same thing was said in the previous two talks. This is a little bit, little bit less noisy. Um, we need to, you know, make it happen, right? And that's that's a real challenge. So I'm going to quickly, how much time have I got? Oh, I've got still, still got plenty of time. Um, so this, I'm being paid by the G-Network project. It's an NIH-funded project. Um, and what it really does is it, it gives, it's a resource for mouse and rat genetics that ties in with human. Before everyone falls asleep, right, we actually apply stuff that came out of the high biacaton. That's what we do. So we're growing the database and link outs. Annotation, curation, tooling, distributed deployment, privacy, we're concerned about because there's more and more human coming in, um, APIs, and linked data. Notice linked data. Um, it, is, it is pleasing to see you know, the number of linked data projects that is growing, right? But it's not growing as fast as we like it, you know, as it should. Right? And, and the problem is that a lot of this knowledge is actually originating here, but also remains here. And we are teaching students, I'm trying to, and, and Mark is also involved. You know, and we, every year we have a course which has 20 students. And out of those 20 students, three get it. Yeah, three people actually think graphs are cool. I could apply this, right? And they, those, those three will actually try to apply it, and only one will succeed. And so one out of 20 will actually use this in, in his or her work. And that stuff doesn't get published, that's, you know, it doesn't come out. And so it's, it's sort of under the radar. And I think we have a problem there, you know, that, that uh, RDF and Sparkle is the coolest technology. Um, and it's, it's quite possible, it's, it's not that hard to grasp, it's not that hard to apply. Even so, it is above the heads of most bioinformaticians and biologists. Yeah, it's, it's, it's holding us back as a community. Yeah, so we need to find ways out of there, you know, and, and maybe it's creating the tools ourselves, as, as I suggested uh, earlier today. <clears throat> but I think, you know, we also have, have a job uh, um, finding a technology that, that actually that they can apply. So I, I call it a crisis, and I have this slide in pretty much every talk today. Real time. Data sharing integration is technically solved. Yeah, we all know that. Software deployment is technically solved. I know that. Provenance and reproducibility are technically solved, right? 
but we don't agree on the how. Maybe we agree here to some degree, right? But uh, as a you know, worldwide, we don't agree. And fair may be a chance of getting to agree to this type of thing. Um, I mean, this 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 slide led to a, a Nature Biotechnology publication. And what are we solving? Data warehousing, blah blah blah. Forget it. What is fair? You know, findable means metadata. I, I, you know, I cannot stress this enough. It's all about metadata, and actually, the metadata is usually lacking. Yeah, it's missing. So Mark's talk was about creating metadata, really, right? Yeah, and, and getting it out again. It's terribly complicated, Mark. <laughs> we need to solve it somehow. Um, and one thing I'll do is uh, I'll go around. You know, I'll, I'll go. I hope to this week to speak to most of you and to to see if we can, if you have ideas. Yeah. So think about it. How do we deal with metadata? Accessible means content accessible, content addre addressable storage, which is a URL ultimately. Um, interoperable means integration. We need our G network data to be fair. I'm, I'm giving this message. So how do we make fair more concrete? Well, one thing I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to push for is, uh, is creating a journal of open data, right? And it should be the lowest possible threshold for people to publish their data. A lot of the data is not being published today, right? It's sitting on people's laptops. It's sitting on servers. It's not accessible. Yeah, so what we want to do is encourage people to submit their data, create a sort abstract, which is a form of metadata, but not, probably not good enough. Give them a DOI so they can make it citable and put it in distributed storage. Yeah. So one idea is to use the IPFS, the interplanetary file system. I don't know if you've heard of it. Yeah, it's something to look up, IPFS. Another thing about core is fair is that there should be no cost, there should be no paywalling. Yeah, if you ask people who do fair, you know, can it actually be paywalled? And they'll say, yeah, <laughs> right? And so it's, it, it will be fair. <laughs> we should, yes. So one journal I am in, an editor of is uh, called the Journal of Open Source Software. It was started uh, two years ago, uh, sorry, slightly over a year ago. And it's a new breed of journal for, for uh, software developers, right? All you need to do is, is, is supply an abstract and your Git repository. And that's a publication. Yeah, so for <laughs> software developers, someone like me, you know, I hate writing papers. I've, got a, I've written a load of papers by now, but I hate writing them. I still do, you know, because it, it's not dry. You already did the work. You wrote the software, right? Now you have to write it again in, in a, a digestible form for someone else who doesn't read it anyway. So minimum pain, maximum result. That's what we aim for. Publish early, publish often. That's the idea. So I hope the Journal of Open Data will be an output for this hackathon. Yeah, this is my final slide. <laughs> Thank you.